the government were talking about was people, they were going to allow people who consented to a conversion therapy to undergo conversion therapy. That was in their original plans. I don't know whether that will feature, but I don't know whether you've got any thoughts about that, Doug. If you consent, it's okay, you can have it. Oh, I got a few thoughts about that. <laughs> I do not believe that in this realm, there is such a thing as consent. I don't think that anybody attempts conversion therapy without having the metaphorical equivalent of a gun to your head, whether that is a, a loss of your family, of mm -hmm. standing in your community, mm -hmm. of membership in your community of faith, or if it is simply due to the internalization of years of self-abnegation around sexual orientation or gender identity, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as free will, free choice. I mean, let's, if there were, wouldn't we see heterosexuals wanting to change their sexual orientation and become gay? It's fabulous, right? Mm, it uh -huh. is, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so, and that is why uh, I think even though the disparity, I, Adam, at the beginning, I was mentioning this disparity in, in research findings between sexual orientation conversion therapy and that for gender identity, but nonetheless, the research that is there on gender identity uh, conversion therapy is very, very compelling on, on the kinds of harms. And I hope that that report is front and center in the discussion, whatever discussion, the MPs and the prime minister are having at this point around maybe they should do yet another U-turn and bring the T back in mm. because it is not supportable otherwise. Thank you. That's a very good comment. I mean, I was just going to come to us to see whether you had a closing comment for our MPs and for Boris Johnson oh. <laughs> on, on this. I mean, that was a great closing comment in a way, but I don't, you may have some further advice about why it's so important well, to include gender as part of this. You know, the last time you had a national election, mm -hmm. I actually was in London and was invited by a dear friend to be the guest at the home of a former uh, Labour MP mm. uh, in London. And we all were watching the election returns on the television. And I, I have to say for me, it was a little PS PTSD from 2016 in our national election, mm. just thinking, oh my God, Disaster. you're kidding. The Tories mm. are taking over everything. I say that because I guess what I would say to, if I could address parliament today, I would say, whatever your affiliation is, and I know you want to keep being elected in your jurisdictions or whatever, but please consider human lives are at stake here. Do not make this a political issue. Please read the research. Please see this for the public health issue and the public health danger that it is. And it is your duty as MPs in the UK government to provide guidance to your people in that regard. No, you shouldn't be making public health policy, but you should be endorsing that which is backed by research. That's my plea to you. And thank you with all respect for taking that from uh, a person from outside your country. Thank you, Doug. That's really helpful. And, and thank you everybody else for participating in today's uh, conversation and to, I, I'm particularly grateful to my assistants from LJ and Joe who have been busy in the chat and making sure everyone's well informed. So please do get the word out there. We will we'll be putting this recording onto YouTube uh, either later this evening or by tomorrow morning. Please share it with your MPs, share it with your colleagues. Your co Let's see what we can do about this. Thank you all so much for coming. Bye bye.